it's difficult to say really where where the idea came from from the um, from this project. Um, I started thinking more about the materials that I was using and where they came from. Um, and when I started wood firing, especially, um, you know, I came across the problem of trying to find a, a good um, commercial clay body that would give me the results that I wanted in the kiln, and I couldn't couldn't find one, so I made up my own um, clay body, which was like which was a um, fairly high flux, um, dirty porcelain that was really receptive to the wood firing, and um, I was using commercially bought materials that mostly had been purified and then I was having to find things to add to it to dirty it up again to try and get some colour so I was sort of undoing what had been done um, to the materials in the first place which seemed absurd and tied in with that I think I was thinking about um, England <laughs> missing Australia and uh, Part of the reason for doing this was to um, educate myself about the British landscape, the geology, and to try and find an affinity with the country, and to do that through um, the medium that I'm um, using to make things, so through, through ceramics. And that became quite an interesting idea, um, link it, you know, because ceramics is very much linked to science, it's a bridge between science and art. It's also very much linked to geology and <clears throat> even though that's not really the case nowadays you know with everything being shipped around the world and materials blended and industrially prepared um, certainly originally it was very much tied to the geology of certain areas and, and that was my focus really to try and um, make pieces specific to certain regions um, that express the qualities of those materials and in, in so doing that I will be you know researching these areas and then traveling to them and spending time intimately in those areas collecting samples and, and getting to know them. Then each of the places I did um, at least one visit, mostly I did two or more. First visit I collected rough samples and then brought them back and did um, preliminary tests on them to see firstly if they were the actual minerals that I thought they were and to try and get some idea of their um, properties and whether they were going to be useful to me. And then I'd go back and do further visits. Um, which were more informed by you know further research and also the first tests that I'd done on those on those materials. I was hoping to just do one visit, but it just really didn't prove um, you know it wasn't possible. I think nearly everywhere has materials that can be used in glazes. Um, I, I, they need work, you know, you've got to find the right materials, find the right blends to get um, a stoneware glaze out and that's acceptable and not just a hideous brown sludge. So my first test firings were just uh, pools of sludgy brown disgustingness. It's taken quite a long time to, you know, get beyond that to try and pull some different colours and textures out of the materials. But the the real um, hurdle has been um, the lack of refractory clays in in Britain. There's, there's loads and loads of clay, massive seams of clay running right, you know, across the country. But there, um, and here in East Anglia again, there's just absolutely you know tons, <laughs> huge amounts of, of clay, but they are 
very low temperature clay. So here in East Anglia, the clays are all full of chalk, calcium carbonate, so they melt um, uh, when, as soon as you're approaching stoneware temperatures. Then you get across the Midlands and the brick clays, and again, you know, they've got um, calcium carbonate in them very high in iron and, and high in impurities and again they, they melt into glazes so it became, it became very very hard to find um, the bones if you like of the pieces that I have to make. I could find the surfaces, some of the clays themselves you know I can make some really nice glazes out of them but my problem was finding something that I could put the glazes on. So, as I said, there's a, a strong link between geology and ceramics. You're basically using the rocks and, and deposits of the, of the earth to, to make pieces. Um, in England, though, uh, so I'm, I'm firing th these pieces to a high temperature, to stoneware temperature, so that I can use naturally occurring rocks like granites and basalts, rhyolites. Um, and rocks like that <coughs> and illustrate their properties. There isn't really a, well there isn't a, um, a historical precedent for, the, for that in England so I'm not following a, tr a tradition. Okay. Um, I'm not doing this as a, a, a sort of backwards looking exercise to try and recreate um, a, a tradition. There isn't a tradition. I'm, you know, really trying. <laughs> I'm using materials, uh, some of which have been used for um, um, for pottery making, mostly only by other um, studio potters, and quite a few materials that, that probably have never been used to uh, make pots before. <laughs> 